of All India Ophthalmological Society in the City of Dreams, Mumbai. I request Dr. Harban Slal, Vice President AIOS, to accompany our presidential guest, Dr. Nitin Verma, to the dais. It is my pleasure to request Dr. Lalit Verma, incoming President AIOS, and Dr. Himanshu Mehta to accompany our esteemed Chief Guest, Ms. Aishwarya Rai Bachchan, to the dais. Incoming to the President of All India of Kinemological Society, Dr. Lalit Verma. Yes, President. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am, for doing the honors. I now request the President of All India of Thermological Society, Dr. Lalit Verma, to deliver his presidential address. Good evening, highly qualified, who are some of the cream, the last cream of the country, and I'm extremely proud to say that they are the ones who have saved millions of eyes in this country, day in and day out from that. Money has never been a criteria. Thank you, ma'am. And, and, and I say that from the depth of my heart. They have not, they have sacrificed their family life. They have done, they have studied till 30, 33 years. And uh, they have st still studying every single day. The big crowd that you see is here, till today is ready to learn, change, adapt and acclimatize to the new conditions that the world is offering. <laughs> Friends, great pleasure to introduce our chief guest, who is the world's envy and India's pride. She has changed and got a new era for India after she became Miss World in 1994, the Miss World Continental Queen of Beauty, Asia and Oceania. I still remember I was a kid studying, I guess, and it was so, so proud feeling to have one of our own person standing there and the world bowing to them. Ma'am, hats off to that and that's a great era that we ended in. And thank you for being with us. She's got the Padma Shri from the Indian government in 2009 and the highest award of the civilian to be given by a civilian person by the French government in 2012. She has worked in multiple languages, she's multifaceted and she can talk in Tamil, Tulu, English, Hindi, Marathi, you name it and she's worked in Bollywood, Telewood, every possible thing including Bengali movies. She's often been cited by the media as the most beautiful woman in the world. Now that is amazing. And that is an Indian pride that we have for her. She was voted as the most powerful lady in India once upon a time. And Time magazine rated her as one of the most influential person in the world. Time magazine doesn't do that just like that. On a personal note, friends, let me tell you something on a very personal note. You might have read things on media. But something that I would like to share in my relationship with her for the past decade. She has been a hand ready. Welcome to the stage.
I'll come there and talk with you all. There with you all. Namaste and good evening everybody. Thank you so, so very much for such a warm welcome today. And um, Dr. Mehta, thank you. That was just so humbling. I mean, thank you so much for your kind words of appreciation. And I'm truly humbled to be in such esteemed company today. And I would like to pay my respects and gratitude to the esteemed guests on the dials. Really, I am I am privileged to be in your company and uh, it is an absolute honor to be here today amongst the uh, esteemed guests on the dials, all of you, you, you surgeons, eye doctors, doctors, uh, family members, um, you're vital to the success, you're the backbone, you're the support and uh, it was so wonderful to hear your president Dr. Lalit to turn around and actually um, express his gratitude uh, towards his family. It was very touching, uh, very apt and uh, it's wonderful to see that. I think that's what um, is um, so special about us as a people. Indians. <laughs> proud to be an Indian, proud to be amongst incredible Indian doctors and uh, proud to be here this evening and uh, that's why it was an easy yes when Dr. Mehta invited me on behalf of the AIOC to, um, to come to join you all this evening. Uh, it was a privilege to be invited as the chief guest and to light the lamp at the inauguration of your conference and uh, wishing you all great success uh, for the next couple of days at this conference and um, uh, you'll have, you'll, you'll pave the way, you'll, you'll make the difference, you'll contribute uh, tirelessly and day in and day out right through from student days. Trust me, I, I was a student of science so I know the beginnings, I know the journey, uh, most of my dearest friends are doctors and um, the commitment, the sacrifice, the dedication, um, however much be said in gratitude for that would be less and um, you know this is, um, it's earned, it's earned the gratitude, the when we, when we fold our hands and say thank you, it's heartfelt, uh, you change lives, you make a difference to so many people, um, to so many lives. Um, so gratitude and thank you um, goes without saying. I did prepare to say a lot more, that, but that was all straight from the heart. <laughs> So, um, apart from congratulating truly each one of you, each one of you on the dais, each one of you in the audience for doing what you do as brilliantly and sincerely and keeping the light shining in most people's lives, I would like to say that it is you who has given me and shared facts um, that regrettably India, the second most populous country in the world, is number one in terms of blindness. And you've shared with me that according to the latest estimates, an astounding number of almost 12 million people are blind. And uh, 135 million live with vision loss. Now we're all aware of it, but when you actually read statistics, it's, um, it's unsettling. But um, it's all of you, members of the medical community, who uh, assure people that more than 90% of vision loss is either preventable or treatable. The question then arises that what are the reasons that are still causing blindness and visual impairment? Now, I'm no one here to wax eloquent on a subject that is home turf for you all but on behalf of all of you 
let me um, shed light that um, it is uh, one of the reasons is cataract which accounts for 62% of blindness the lack of early detection after cataract uh, it's the corneal problems which were found to be the second most common cause of blindness and for the reduction in avoidable blindness due to either of these causes early detection is key so this needs primary eye care which is accessible and affordable to all keywords one of the underreported tragedies of our time is that nearly 90% of the blind live in low income rural areas the main cause of this often needless and frequently avoidable blindness besides cataract is the lack of glasses in time which results in 20% of blindness now it's a, this is a fact and a statistic that i think most um, most people in regular society would not be aware of unless shared on platforms such as this then we have glaucoma that's retinal blindness which is the result of diabetes highly prevalent in our country myopia in children is on the rise and the last two years these very uh, this immensely trying two years that we've all gone through um during the lo lockdown brought um, everybody's work and even entertainment online and that obviously uh, has meant uh, a lot more strain on the delicate eyes of children uh, which is which has been uh, detrimental testing um but i won't limit that just to children i think we adults also are part of that community who have um, put our eyes through a lot uh because uh, you know screen time is something that is often been discussed especially um in the world of parenting but um i think uh, it just naturally or unnaturally grew to an extent um, unheard of especially in the last two years globally and um, that just meant um, turning to you that much more and i am sure uh, you all have committed um uh largely just to uh, society's queries uh, concerns and um, have been a huge factor to guiding aiding and easing uh, everybody's um, you know trepidations uh, in the area um well you are the experts in the field and you tell us that 75% of blindness is avoidable either by timely surgery or by proper glasses given in time to the people in need another major problem is that people in low income areas need to be taught that vision loss is not normal it isn't a natural transition of age and time uh, alone so a lack of awareness that treatment uh, is an option has been shown to be a more common reason for people living needlessly with blindness than the cost the factors that facilitate awareness are access to affordable local health uh, local health care higher literacy rates better access to information technology and all in all education educating people on the subject so how can everybody we all make make this better through primary eye care where uh, camps can be used effectively for funding patients in need of cataract surgeries vision centers in rural areas then there is um, making glasses available at subsidized rates and though this is just the tip of the iceberg it is a very very vital one public and private partnership in the area and then um, i found this an interesting read where you shared with me about gender based blindness and it was interesting to discover that studies have repeatedly shown that one of the fastest routes to poverty reduction is to empower women mm -hmm, that's right 64% of blind people are girls and women and women account for nearly 75% of cataract blindness and do not receive surgery 
at the same rate as men. A fact, even in today's time where we all believe we have move, moved way ahead in terms of gender equality and equal, uh, equal care, uh, equal understanding and equal rights. In some parts of the country, the risk of going blind from trachoma is now up to four times greater for women than it is for men. So another of the benefits of combating blindness in low-income areas is unlocking female empowerment. And now we come to eye donation. Eye donation in our country is very low, just 40,000 per year, and we all are aware of the population of our country. The gift of vision is by far one of the simplest and immensely effective gift that you can actually give uh, your fellow people, humanity, family members, or society. Make your choice, but it is a gift. It is a selfless gift, no less, and by far the simplest act of charity, donation, good karma, take your pick, find your reasons. But I believe eye donation is something that we all can easily pledge to uh, taking a step towards. So do please consider donating your eyes. Um, you know, you can actually pass the torch and light another's life with this very simple gift of vision to anyone out there in need. So I would like to conclude by humbly and in all gratitude thanking you for your immense contribution in society to all our fellow people and once again a huge round of applause to you and congratulations to you for all your sincere endeavors. So thank you and God bless. So this is for you. Friends, can we all arise to take the pledge to eradicate blindness by 2025? Thank you so much. Ashwarya has told that I should read. And all of you will repeat this. So today, first day of the conference is 2nd of June 2022, we the members of AIUS take this pledge and I will request I read one line and all of you repeat. We from the profession of ophthalmologists, we from the profession of ophthalmologists understand more than anyone else, more than anyone else. The importance and critical need to eradicate preventable blindness in India. Preventable blindness in India. We acknowledge our responsibility. We acknowledge our responsibility to lead by action. To lead by action. Putting in dedicated efforts. Putting in dedicated efforts to reduce preventable blindness. Preventable blindness to 50 percent of the current cases by 2025 by 50% of the current cases by 2025 we individually and collectively we individually and collectively pledge that we shall sincerely dedicate our time and effort that we shall sincerely dedicate our time and efforts towards this cause towards the cause we shall support the mobilization of resources we shall support the mobilization of resources from corporates, from corporates, from individuals, from individuals, and from government, and from government, for eliminating preventable blindness. For eliminating preventable blindness, we shall also provide support. We shall also provide support 
for strengthening the nation's capability for strengthening the nation's capability to assess and prevent avoidable blindness to assess and prevent avoidable blindness thank you thank you so much Respected Chief Guest, Ms. Ashwarya Rai Bachchan, Presidential Guests, Dr. Andrew Eller and Dr. Nitin We commence the inaugural program by lighting the ceremonial lamp. I request the Honorable Chief Guest, our guests of honor, and other dignitaries on the dais to proceed for the lamp lighting ceremony. Thank you everyone.
I now request Dr. Barun K. Naik, the President of All India Ophthalmological Society, to welcome everyone and to introduce the incoming President of the All India Ophthalmological Society, Dr. Lalit Verma. burden on the overworked office bearers. We should also bring in the required expertise one such example, the purpose of compliance, taxation and regulation itself. There is an immediate requirement for such a specialized roles that only newly added governing council members. Yeah. It is my proud privilege to request Dr. Barun K. Naik, the President AIS to install the incoming President Dr. Dalit Verma by destroying the President's medal. Thank you, Dr. Nayak, sir, for passing the baton. I now request our esteemed chief guest, Ms. Aishwarya Rai Bachchan, to present the AIOS memento and Dr. K. R. Datta memento to the. What happened? On behalf of the All India Ophthalmological Society, I would like to express my deep gratitude to Ms. Aishwarya Rai Bachchan for gracing the occasion and making this event a truly memorable one. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for the support to our mission of ameliorating blindness. As a token of uh, appreciation, we would like to felicitate Ms. Ashwarya Rai Bachchan. Can we have the, uh, can we have the felicitation please? AIOS is honored and blessed to have stalwarts who with their exceptional talent and dedication have made a seminal contribution to the field of ophthalmology. AIOS is honored to confer the Lifetime Achievement Award upon our past president, Professor Anita Panda, who as a teacher, surgeon and human being has inspired a generation of ophthalmologists and her most notable contribution is in the field of corneal transplantation and eye banking.
and what a momentous occasion from the brand ambassador of corneal transplantation to someone who's who all her life has done corneal transplanting and eye banking. I request our chief guest, Ms. Ashwara Bhai Bachchan, to do the honours, please. Can we all stand up to give Professor Anita Panda ma'am a standing ovation? Thank you ma'am and thank you everyone. AIS is honored to confer the Lifetime Achievement Award to another ophthalmologist who has again spent his life in contributing to ophthalmology, Dr. Gudi Maitla Ramachandra Reddy. We are proud to note that he has been conferred with the award for outstanding services and prevention of blindness by the Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology also. Dr. Jia Reddy. I request our chief guest, Ms. Ashwarya Rai Bachchan, to do the honours. Thank you so much, ma'am. I now invite the Chairman Scientific Committee, All India Ophthalmological Society, Dr. Partha Biswas, to announce the scientific awards. And I call upon our respected Chief Guest, Ms. Ashwarya Rai Bachchan, to do the honours. It's with great privilege that we announce the Scientific Committee Awards. The next award, and that is the Gulapalli Rao Endowment Lecture Award, and this goes to Dr. R. D. Ravindran. Dr. Gulapalli Rao is an iconic figure, a living legend again, and who has given to us the L.B. Prashad Eye Hospital. <coughs> Dr. R.D. Ravindran, sir. Put your hands together for Dr. R.D. Ravindran, who is now in the main front leading Aravind Eye Hospital to the limits and beyond limits. It gives me great pleasure to announce the next award and that is the P. Nam Perimal Swami Endowment Lecture Award to Dr. Colonel Madan Desh Pandey. Dr. P. Nam Perimal Swami was, is a living legend and he was one of the main people who brought about Aravind Eye Hospital to what he, it is now. It's a chain of eye hospitals and this hospital is something that the whole world has learned lessons from. I call upon the next awardee and this time it is the AIS P. Shivaredi International Award being awarded to Dr. Samar Kumar Basak. Dr. Samar Kumar Basak, please. This award is being jointly shared with Professor Jeevan Singh Jatyal, sir, please join us on stage. A very, very big hand for all these people who have given their lives to ophthalmology, who have created the boundaries of ophthalmology, boundaries that cannot be reached by single person in their lifetimes. Dr. Samar Basak is Director of Disha Chain of Eye Hospitals. Professor Tityal sir is the Chief of RP Centre. 
and a teacher, an academician, and a wonderful surgeon, and a Padmashri awardee as well. I have great pleasure in announcing the AIS C.N. Shroff Award to Professor Atul Kumar. Professor Atul Kumar. Ah, Professor. Professor Atul Kumar is again a teacher par excellence and a great vitro-retina surgeon and he has trained students in vitro-retina not only throughout the country but throughout the world today and a Padma Shri awardee I wish to announce the next award and that's the ARS Beacon Orion Rao Award to Dr. Jyotirmay Biswas. Dr. Jyotirmay Biswas is a UVA specialist and he has led this branch of ophthalmology not only in India but also in the world today. He has one of the highest number of publications in the field of UVA. Put your hands together for Dr. Jyotirmay Biswas. The next awardee is the IRS Kiyar Datta Award goes to Dr. Sujata Das. Dr. Sujata Das, a great cornea surgeon and... ...born to us today means a lot to all of us